ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله my brothers and sisters in islam لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك ان الحمد والنعمه لك والملك لا شريك لك this is one of the first rituals as soon as you get into the state of ihram you must perform when you fly in the air there is a place that is surrounding the haram we call it al miqat a location you must pass while you are wearing ihram and you are in a state of ihram and you immediately start pronouncing the talbiya fi sunan ibn majah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told his companions while they were going to Mecca to perform Hajj. He said that to them, Atani Jibreel. Jibreel alayhi salam came to me. وَأَمَرَنِي أَن تَأْمُرَ أَصْحَابَكْ أَن يَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَهُمْ بِالتَّلْبِيَةِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ مَشَاعِرِ الْحَجِّ أَوْ شَعَائِرِ الْحَجِّ and he commanded me, Jibreel came to me and he commanded me to command you or to ask you to command your companions to raise their voice with the talbiyah. And this, of course, applies to the brothers, the sisters, a lower tone. Because it is one of the rituals of Hajj. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, wal hadith fi sunan ibn Majah, Afdalu al-hajj al-ajj wa thajj. The best of Hajj is Al Aj. Al Aj is Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik la Sharika Laka Labbaik, wa Thaj Iraqatu Dima. The sacrifice. Very quickly, in 10 minutes or so, hopefully less, what is the meanings behind this Talbiya? Important. Because that heart must be engaged and the heart will only be engaged if there is some understanding when you say labbaik allahumma labbaik what does it mean the translation in arabic basically yes O oh allah i'm responding to you the slogan of servitude to allah Sami'na wa ata'na. You're saying labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. What are you responding to, in fact? One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, addressing the believers, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا It is mandatory upon a Muslim who's sane, aqil, Balir, reach the, st the, the age of puberty, Qadir, able to. Once it comes to the sisters, they have the mahram. That they must perform hajj. So you're saying, oh Allah, I'm responding to that. I heard, oh Allah, your command in the Quran. And I'm obeying it. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kama fi sahih muslim in hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu an one day he stood like this to his companions and he said inna allaha farad alaykum al hajja fa hujju Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed mandated upon you that you must perform hajj perform hajj al hajj farida it's a pillar of this deen قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يقول ممرايز الحديث حديث عبد الله بن عمر وهو في الصحيحين بني الإسلام على خمس شهادة 
اور شہادتی اللہ الہ الا اللہ و ان محمد رسول اللہ اقام الصلاة ایتاء الزکاة صوم رمضان و حج البیت لمن استطاع الى ذالک سبیلا فیو آر رسپاندنگ تو دات وین یو سی لبیک اللہم لبیک Live that feeling of servitude that you're saying, yes, I'm coming. I heard and I obeyed, O oh Allah. Uh, this may not apply to some of us who have performed Hajj before. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there is a beautiful hadith out there fi uh, Sunan al-Bayhaqi. Listen to this. Hadith Ilahi, Hadith Qudsi, Hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anh. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said Allah سبحانه وتعالى said إن عبدا أصححت له جسده A servant of mine I given him good health وأوسعت له في رزقه And I made his provision He's able to He's wealthy He's rich تمر عليه خمسة أعوام ولا يرد إلي لمحروم He allows five years to go by without coming to visit me in my house He is deprived He is deprived from a lot of goodness ف... Even if you performed Hajj before ما شاء الله This is نافلة ما شاء الله your You're saying, Sami'na wa ata'na. I'm coming to visit you in your house, O oh Allah. Visit your house, O oh Allah. A lot of, of Muslims, by the way, who go to Hajj, they think they are going to Hajj because they have the money. Or because they are intelligent. Brother and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in Islam, change that idea right now. You're going to Hajj because Allah has invited you. والله اسمع هذه وهذا في الحديث is not my talk الحجاج وفد الله the حجاج the pilgrims are the delegation of Allah دعاهم فأجابوه he invited them and you responded you said yes طيب I ask you a question do you allow anybody in your house without your permission do you Do you, I'm asking you, do you allow anyone in your house without your permission? No. You expecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow anyone in his house without his permission? No. He invited you. And you said, I accepted your invitation, oh Allah, I'm coming. I'm coming to you in your house. Once you say, labbayka, these are the feelings that you must live, brothers and sisters in Islam. In order to enjoy hajj, if this heart is not engaged in hajj, you're not going to enjoy it. is not going to be fun. You have to live these experiences. Here is a last piece. Uh, very interesting. أَخْرَجَهَا إِبْنُ جَرِيرُ وَإِبْنَ أَبِي حَاتِمْ سَنَدٌ صَحِيحٌ صَحَحَهُ الْحَافِظُ بْنُ حَجَرُ فِي فِي كِتَابِ الْحَجِّ بْنِ حَدِيثِ بْنِ عَبَّاسِ When Ibrahim a.s. raised the foundation of the Kaaba, and you probably know the story. When he finished him and him is Ismail, Allah told him, Now I want you, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا Ibrahim alayhi salam was in the desert, in Mecca. No people around him, but few. Allah is commanding him, I want you to call upon all of mankind to come and perform hajj. Ya Rab, how is my voice going to reach everybody? He said, your job is to make the call, I will deliver. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has delivered the call of Ibrahim to you. And when you say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ You're referring to that call. The second piece of, of, of the talbiyah, لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ الإخلاص Please, and I'm going to ask Adil to do this for you. If you're going to hajj because you want to show off, or if you want to be called a hajji, or you have nothing better to do, or you want to get it off your chest. I'm wealthy and the people ask me, have you performed hajj? And I tell them no, and they are disgusted with me. I just want to get hajj, so I tell them yes. Please take your money back. Give them their money back. It's not going to be accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَأَتِمُّ 
الحج والعمرة لله. Perform Hajj and Umrah for Allah. And and this is something that you have to work on. I'm sorry. In Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, كما في سنن ابن ماجه, he made this dua. اللهم حج لا رياء فيها ولا سمعة. The Nabi, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, made this dua. Oh Allah, I want to perform a Hajj. I don't want to be seeking uh, name after it or, 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 or showing off. I just want it to be done sincerely for you, O oh Allah. And this is, the, this is something that you have. You see that Talbiya will remind you with sincerity. When you say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ And then, لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ You have no partner. I'm doing this for you. You see, when you repeat the Talbiya, you remind yourselves with sincerity. That is two. And then comes in the last piece, إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ You're basically saying, thank you for taking me. Alhamdulillah. You should be grateful that Allah invited you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should be thankful that you're still going. So, إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ هذه التلبية.